Hold on to your pants, people, because Motorola's dashing new mega flagship is finally hitting the UK. I'm talking about the Motorola Moto Edge 30 Ultra with its Swish 200 megapixel camera and a price tag of 749 quid. But is that 200 meg camera just another headline grabbing gimmick, kind of similar to the Nothing Phone's disco arse? Well, I've got myself a Motorola Edge 30 Ultra in this very brown box. Gonna whip it out, set it up, take you on a full on tour of the hardware, the software, test out the game and the camera, all that good stuff. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now I know what you're thinking. Are you sure this is actually the proper retail box? Cause frankly, it looks a bit cruddy, like the kind of thing you probably knocked up yourself in about five minutes. And the reason for this is it's eco-friendly packaging. You see, manufacturers these days are all about saving the planet rather than shafting it as hard as possible. So yeah, the box may look quite basic, but it's not about the outside, it's about what's on the inside. So my mum keeps telling me. So let's see what we've got. And inside there's one Motorola Edge 30 Ultra. Got a bit of Type-C USB cable action. And unlike many other flagship phones these days, you do actually get a power adapter. And it's a big old beefy bugger at that as well. And yippee hooray, Motorola has even bundled a good old condom case in there to slap around your Moto Edge 30 Ultra and keep it protected. And there you have it, that's everything in the box. You can actually recycle this if you want or just bung it on a shelf, whatever. And so here it is, da -da 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 -da, the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra all set up and ready for action. And I've got to say, it looks and feels every bit the flagship smartphone. As you can see there, a near bezel-less design. That 6.67 inch display just fills up the front end. Reasonably skinny device as well, but it's definitely got a good heft to it. And what you've got here is a sandblasted aluminium frame, nice and skinny, sandwiched in between two plates of glass. And that arse features what Motorola terms a satin glass finish. It's actually a matte texture. Still feels pretty smooth to the touch, just a hint of green. And it's certainly a very smart design. It screams, hey, look at me, I'm Mr. Business, I'm important. I deal in stocks and shares as a hobby and I know all about equity and grown up shit like that. The camera lens juts ever so slightly from the surface, doesn't stick out too far thankfully. Gotta say, pretty slick stuff and the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra's back and front are constructed from Gorilla Glass 5. And you also have a screen protector slathered across the front, so hopefully the Moto Edge 30 Ultra should prove pretty durable, but stay tuned for my full review for more on that. Sadly, unlike several other flagship smartphones and even a few mid-rangers these days, the Ultra is not fully water resistant. What you got here is an IP52 rating, so you're covered for grit and bits of dust and general splash resistance. It's alright if you stood outside and it starts to piddle it down. But definitely don't go dropping it in a good old bubbly bath because that'll probably f*** it right up. As for your colour options, well, the Moto Edge 30 Ultra comes in a choice of just two colours, black or white and here in the UK it seems like the black model is the only one available certainly via the Motorola website. Pretty boring stuff, I'd have preferred at least one or two colourful options but hey ho. So let's shift from the hardware to the software and what you got on here is good old Android 12 of course in a fairly stock form. As usual Motorola has done very little tamperance, you won't find a whole heap of crapware shoved on here. It's basically just your standard Google setup and then a couple of Motorola's own bits including Ready4 and of course that Moto app which is actually a pretty bloody good addition. This is great for setting up the Moto Edge 30 Ultra exactly how you want it. Just tap personalize for instance and you've got a plethora of options. You can change the grid layout for instance, you can mess around with the fonts, the theme colors and as with all Android 12 smartphones you can actually base these on the wallpaper you've got installed at the time. Motorola also adds a ton of gesture support. Flip for do not disturb, very handy indeed. Lift to unlock means you don't have to go to all the trouble of pushing the power button. Phew. And yeah, you got my own personal favourite, the Fast Torch. The Moto app has lots of other stuff packed in there, including tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your smartphone. And down at the very bottom, one of my other favourite features, the Moto Game Time Tools. This adds a nifty little icon whenever you load up a game. Just give that a quick tap and you will bring up the game time features. This allows you to, for instance, block all calls and block all other notifications as well. So you're not interrupted mid-game by your boss, your mum, whatever. You can also record the action. You've got the acoustic lights feature. This is a bit weird and I don't really see the point of it. Basically just lights up the edges of the Moto Edge 30 Ultra whenever game sounds are detected. A more useful tool for any streamers out there is the direct Twitch tie-in so you can get streaming your session. And I also like how you can change that on-screen icon to a simple swipe from the edge effort as well. Just a little bit more subtle, a bit more tucked away. And the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra also has a couple of other bonus bits tucked away in the settings such as, for instance, the edge lights. 
This just lights up the edge of the phone whenever you receive a notification and you've got full customization so you can change up the color and exactly which notifications use the edge lighting feature. It's a rather subtle effect though, shall we say, so you won't even really notice it happening unless you're in a pretty dark room to begin with. And as I mentioned before, Motorola has also chucked on its usual ready for feature. And frankly, I could do an entire video just on this, but in a nutshell, it allows you to stream from your smartphone direct to a second display quickly and easily, including laptops and TVs. Works an absolute charm with my LG Tally box. As long as it's switched on, it just pops up in the menu. Give it a quick tap. And then a few seconds later, you're ready for action and you can just cast your mobile desktop straight up to the big screen, or you can stream some media, get some video chat action on the go or play a game. Now for your security shenanigans, you've got a basic in-display fingerprint sensor. It is just an optical scanner, not an ultrasonic effort, but so far TouchWord seems very fast to act and pretty dependable as well. But again, stay tuned for my in-depth review to see if it stays that way. And as an alternative option, you do also have a bit of face unlock action. So let's just get that all set up. And so far this too seems to be pretty fast to react. No buggering about, just lift the phone or give that power button a quick tap and you're straight in. As for the storage, well, again, there's a choice of 128, 256 or 512 gigs of space on the Moto Edge 30 Ultra. But here in the UK, I believe it's just the 256 gig model that you can grab, certainly again, direct from Motorola. Sadly, there's no way to expand that storage, no micro SD memory card support, but you do get a double sided SIM card, so you can slap two SIMs in there at the same time. However, there does not appear to be any eSIM support, which is a real shame. So now let's have a propaganda at that behemoth 6.67 inch P OLED display which fills up the front end of the Moto Edge 30 Ultra. And no surprise really that it's an absolute cracker. You've got a full HD plus resolution so despite the fact this phone is Godzilla sized those visuals are still pretty crisp. Those colours are nice and poppy as well. We've got accurate colour reproduction, got full support for 10 bit here and HDR 10 plus video support as well. Nice sharp contrast, gorgeous deep blacks. And only a teeny wee selfie cam orifice wedged up there at the very top end of the display to intrude on the action when you do go full screen while watching a movie or you're doing your bit of gaming. Unfortunately, the display doesn't dim down quite as much as I would have liked, so when you are lying in bed in complete darkness, it does seem quite bright still. But on the flip side, boost the brightness all the way up, and it is certainly bright enough to cope with any kind of sunshiny outdoor conditions. And yes, that display does curve gently around the edges here on the left and right side of the Moto Edge 30 Ultra, hence the near bezel-less finish. Unfortunately, I have noticed a bit of palm intrusion, whether I'm clutching the phone like so in portrait mode, as you can see there, YouTube not activating. And also when I'm using the camera like so, sometimes the shutter will not activate because I'm guessing my fingers are just intruding on the screen a bit much. Other than that, no real complaints with this screen. It's an absolute stunner, as you'd expect from a flagship smartphone. And this panel is fully customizable, as always. You've got the usual tools to save your peepers. You can mess around with the color reproduction. And as you can see, the refresh rate is set to auto by default, but you can boost it all the way up to 144 hertz full time, if you like. But what about the audio? Well, the Model Edge 30 Ultra sports a stereo speaker setup with full Dolby Atmos shenanigans. But is it actually decent? Well, let's check it out. Now Google advertises the Pixel 6a as supporting fast charging, which is complete and utter bollocks. It usually takes well over an hour to charge back to full. And that's pretty bloody good, gotta say. Certainly on top volume, it is loud enough. Even if you live in quite a noisy household, you should have no trouble hearing what is going on there. Uh, there's a clear imbalance. The bottom speaker is obviously more powerful than the top little speaker up here, which is a little bit tinny. But overall, the sound quality, not bad at all. Certainly more than good enough for a bit of YouTube and another video stuff. Of course, naturally, there's no headphone jack here on the Moto Edge 30 Ultra. You'll have to go Zenfone or Xperia if you want something along those lines. But you do have full Bluetooth 5.2 streaming support, which so far seems absolutely fine. But again, stay tuned for my in-depth review for more and all that. So like pretty much every flagship smartphone emerging towards the arse end of 2022, the Moto Edge 30 Ultra is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset. And that's backed here in the UK model by 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM. So no real shock then that the everyday running here isn't just smooth, it's proper schmoove. Got to admit, I was kind of worried that Motorola wouldn't quite pack good enough cooling tech into the Moto Edge 30 Ultra to deal with the likes of Genshin Impact and other really intensive Android titles, especially when you boost them all the way up to those top-end graphic settings. 
Gotta say though, my early gaming impressions here on the Mortal Edge 30 Ultra are pretty bloody good. After about an hour or so of Genshin action, the gameplay was still pretty fluid and the phone itself didn't feel like it was heating up at all. It certainly seemed to handle the game on those highest detail settings at 60 FPS, no worries whatsoever. But of course I'll be sure to rigorously test this bugger over the weekend and just make sure that it really can keep a good frame rate even over hours and hours of troll bash and magnificence. And yes, of course, you do have those gaming tools I mentioned earlier to block notifications, record your mad skills if you've got mad skills. I certainly do not have mad skills. I've been playing this game for months and I've barely even scratched the main story, but yeah. And even though the Moto Edge 30 Ultra is quite a skinny bugger, Motorola has still managed to cram in a 4610 mAh capacity battery, which is pretty decent. And I'm kind of hoping because it's a stock Android vibe and that 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset is pretty energy efficient that you'll get a full day of battery life from a full charge, no worries whatsoever. But again, you'll have to stay tuned for my in-depth review for more on all that. No worries when it comes to recharging because the Moto Edge 30 Ultra supports 125 watt wired charging, so bung a cable in it, you'll get a half charge in around 10 minutes. And you've also got support for 50 watt wireless charging and a good bit of reverse wireless charging if you fancy some of that. So just like all good wrestling pay-per-views, let's end this Moto Edge 30 Ultra unboxing and hands-on review with the main event, and I'm talking about that camera tech. And of course, the headline grabber, the attention seeker here on the Moto Edge 30 Ultra is that 200 megapixel primary camera sensor, which does shoot 12.6 megapixel images by default using a good bit of pixel binning. But if you really want to, you can get the ultra res mode on the go. And this will capture photos with the full 200 megapixel capability. You do have to keep your hand quite still though, because it takes a little bit of time. So as you can see there, regular bog standard photo taken in the auto mode, 12.6 megapixels and takes up roughly three meg on the storage. Whereas yeah, an ultra res 201 megapixel effort takes up considerably more space. Good thing we've got 256 gigs of storage here. It's your regular Motorola camera UI here on the Ultra, so no real surprises. Packed with features, but pretty easy to use one-handed. You can drag down all of the extra tools and settings like so. Got the usual AI shenanigans, which can help by suggesting different camera modes when appropriate. And all the other usual features as well, including smart composition, which can just help to crop in and straighten up your shot, make it look a bit better. And if you're curious, here's just a small selection of sample shots that I've snapped with my first 24 hours with the Moto Edge 30 Ultra. But I will be thoroughly testing out the optics to so come back in about a week or so for my full final verdict. As well as that 200 megapixel primary sensor, you've also got an ultra wide angle shooter. It's a 50 megapixel effort. Should prove rather handy for getting a more dramatic snap or simply fitting more into frame. And as well as that, you've also got yourself a separate 12 megapixel portrait shooter, which actually has a two times optical zoom. As you can see there, you can play around with the aperture level, as it were, so it just increases the amount of bokeh. Or if you don't want to crop in, you can go for your standard primary sensor as well. And this just, again, just adds a bokeh style effect. And the Ultra also comes pack in a pro mode, so you can mess around with the ISO levels, the white balance, etc. You can also shoot in a RAW format if you want to. And then perhaps unsurprisingly head to the more section and you've got even more camera modes to play around with, including the night vision mode, which can help brighten up your shots when the lighting conditions aren't great. Although that 200 meg primary sensor is quite a massive one anyway, so it should prove pretty good for those night shots. And then for video, you can shoot it all the way up to 8K resolution at 30 frames per second, otherwise 4K resolution at 30 or 60 FPS. And again, here's a couple of quick sample clips for your view and pleasure, but much more on the video side of things in my in-depth review. And then finally, if you're a bit of a selfie fan, maybe you're on the Instagrams, well, you've got a 60 megapixel front-facing camera on the Ultra, so that should prove good enough. Uses 4-in-1 pixel bin in, so shoots 15 meg photos by default, but you can tweak that again in the settings. And it looks like you've got a, a wide angle option as well if you want, which makes ooh, all of the difference. And good news for vloggers as well, because the Moto Edge 30 Ultra can record up to 4K resolution footage using that front facing camera. Touchwood so far seems pretty good, strong audio pickup, and even though it's a quite a dimly lit environment in here, not looking too grainy, just a bit saggy really. And that in a nutshell kiddies is the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra, a rather fine looking flagship indeed. That's all for me and Veronica for today, but my sim is slapped inside of the Ultra. I will be testing it out, using it as my full time blower, so stay tuned for that review next week. Any burning questions or anything, let me know in the comments down below. Please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you.